for hello. Uh, how many people did you say hello to? An estimate is fine. I think it was only about three people that I said hello to, mm -hmm. or at least noticed me when I said hello. Uh, I estimated to be around five people. Okay. Uh, what happened when you greeted people? Did they smile? Did they laugh? Did they seem uneasy? I thought they were, well, they did laugh kind of uneasily. It was like kind of like they were looking at some weird person or something. Mm -hmm. It's a bit awkward. <laughs> How about you? What uh, do you think? When I greeted people, some people were studying, so they didn't really notice or they had headphones on. But other people, when they did say, when they heard me, some I think one person said hello back, but other people yeah. just smiled or like they looked at us as we passed. Um, I don't think anyone seemed uneasy. Or maybe like one person when we were when we said really? hi and his backpack his, his back was towards us he was like loading his backpack and he was just like who are you saying hello to <laughs> That's what it was like. yeah and the third question was how did your behavior change from first from start to finish it did not change at all <laughs> i am still introverted at all <laughs> it's still too much for me <laughs> for me i think that um i think it was pretty like excited for the uh i guess endeavor because like i don't seem that bad when i'm talking to like strangers randomly i just think that it did change when we were approaching a classroom we were we thought some random people were going to be there but a whole class was there <laughs> yeah. so like we were like no, no 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 let's go let's go let's go so there was that yeah. uh and for triangulation what was the third thing you chose what comment did you make uh so the triangulation part, I was talking to a guy who was playing on the piano prior to me talking to him. I chose that specifically since I'm taking um, intro to piano courses over at main campus. So it's something that I can actually talk to him and ask about. Mm -hmm. um, I chose the elevator buttons or like where the elevator buttons were stored. Um, I, I said that, oh, um, the elevator buttons are on the opposite side of where the triangles are. So he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Um, and then the second question is, did the other person respond to you? Describe the interaction. Uh, yes, he did respond to me. And he, it was quite interesting how he explained that he wasn't actually just playing based off the script, but he was actually improvising as he went along with the music playing. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of cool. And, he kind of seemed to like understand like I was just starting out and maybe just show me some stuff, but I did not understand enough to actually <laughs> do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. For me, uh, yeah, he did respond. He was like, oh yeah, I noticed that too. And then uh, I think we just started talking about like who I was, my name, we shook hands. He, uh, he asked Charles his name and then we talked about majors and then he got off the elevator. So then that's when the conversation ended. Um, and then uh, the third one was compare this triangulation interaction to the interactions you had while saying hello. Um, beginning the interaction was just as awkward, but after like talking a little bit, it becomes a bit less awkward. I won't say it's not awkward, but yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, I think this one was more like, Eh, like I, I guess a little bit more hesitant because like for the hello ones, you we were just going around and saying hello to people, so we didn't really have to stop to, and talk to anyone. So I wasn't afraid of like continuing the conversation. But for this one, I was afraid of like someone if the other person was like stagnant or not willing to respond. So then I was just like I had to like think about like I guess backup questions just in we case the like conversation went stale. What's up? One minute left. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you want to read the. Okay, um, the Brooklyn Bridge, who, who do you ask for directions from and why do you choose them? Um, I asked this random lady outside the bus stop on, from 6 Metro Tech and she was like the only one there so I was just like, eh, mm -hmm. sucker. <laughs> yeah, um, me, I chose this random guy because he was calling from the di general direction of the Brooklyn Bridge. I wasn't sure if he came from there but that's kind of... So how far did you get? Um, we asked the person to give us directions and draw it on a, uh, on a notebook. She she just told us it was like straightforward and near a cafe and then I, in, in order to elaborate i asked her could you draw it out and then she drew it out for us mm -hmm. and for me the guy he wanted to kind of show it on google maps i guess that makes sense considering that it was, it's probably more accurate to use luckily my phone just ran out of data that day so i could kind of um, <laughs> say that 
I had no data, but he still kind of tried to point out the general direction using the Google map since I already downloaded it on my phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, this expedition required you to lie. How did that feel? Um, it was okay. I mean, I just felt bad. Like, oh, I can't, I couldn't say my phone died because it didn't die, so I had to lie. So it was like, meh. I was tempted to say this is for a project so she wouldn't get suspicious, but like, she was okay with it, so I didn't think too much about it. You? Me, I didn't have to lie since my <laughs> phone ran out of data actually that day. Mm -hmm. But actually, I could turn on the mobile data that's anyway. Just go over. It's but okay. I didn't lie, so yeah. that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I did forget which side was Brooklyn Bridge. I keep mixing those two up. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah. Okay, so what was something that happened during this exercise that you found striking or surprising? Um, probably my, like willingness to like talk to someone it wasn't i don't think talking to people is that bad <laughs> it's just i feel like i have more of a my problem is where i need to ask questions or continue the conversation like i don't want a conversation to be just yes or no answers or a, a stale conversation so um for me i can't find it's the other way around like i have a harder time starting the conversation but afterwards it starts becoming more comfortable and just kind of go along with it more easily. Mm -hmm. And I also found weird that like a lot of people were willing were willing to talk to us. Maybe because like we were talking to them near NYU building, so they assumed we're NYU students, so they would want to help us out. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I guess it's something to think about. If someone asked for advice on how to talk to strangers, what would you tell them? Uh, just do it. Like if you're gonna be, if you might be bad at talking to strangers at first. But, I mean, eventually, <laughs> eventually you'll be fine, you know? Uh, yeah, I'll say just starting the conversation is probably the hardest part. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, just try and go along with it. Yeah. Uh, Consider your team projects. In what ways might talking to strangers be important in order to be successful? Who are the strangers you might need to talk to? Definitely uh, our customers. <laughs> yeah, we need to talk to potential customers because our project is... Um, is more along the lines of minority or to people who don't have a unlimited data plan or who might not even have uh, internet at home, which according to our ex, uh, well, research is the, major the, the minority of Americans, which is around like 78% oh, have internet at home. So we would be trying to see uh, or talk to people who are in that minority that don't have internet at home. Yeah. yeah. Um, our, it's, 78% that was from about 2016 I believe um the more recent article I think it was about 15% of students don't have internet access at home so that's kind of like our target group and since it's such a small group we're gonna have to talk to a lot of people <laughs> in yeah. order to even find just that one person one person that fits the criteria mm -hmm. also oh, being in like the city area it's gonna be pretty difficult for yeah. us honestly yeah because a lot of people already have like Maybe if we go upstate New York, <laughs> where it's project. just hills and stuff. <laughs> For this project. I don't know. Yeah. So these strangers might be, uh, we were focusing on the education aspect of lack of internet. So we might talk to uh, students or like high school students. Or I know that um, in Queens and sometimes in Brooklyn, the public libraries have a more, more people willing to use the computers than uh, computers actually use. Uh, are you are available so like they have a wait list and i feel like some of these um people might be the customers we're looking for because they don't have internet at home that's why they go to libraries to use the internet yeah that's true um then again it's been so long since i last went so i guess we're going now <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> okay okay <we're> <laughs>